This video has been rated by the home office in which I'm sitting is not suitable for work. May contain scenes of lizards having sex accompanied by cheesy 70s music. Viewer discretion advised. In the last video I explained the process of vitellogenesis, or cycling, which is the start of the reproductive cycle. If your monitors are together when this happens, you'll probably start seeing some mating behavior. If you keep your pair separately, the best time to put them together is when the female is undergoing vitellogenesis as that's when she's going to be most receptive to the male's advances and when he'll be more likely to have things other than aggression on his mind. This video is about the mating process itself. You may be wondering why this requires a video, as surely the monitors can do this on their own without human intervention, which of course is definitely the case. However, there are a few facts about monitor mating that you may find interesting and which your parents probably didn't cover when they locked you in the bathroom for the big sex talk. It's also important to be able to recognize normal mating behavior so you can pick up on when your monitors are being too aggressive towards each other which may result in injury. Before we go any further, I want to talk briefly about terminology. A lot of people use the word breeding when really what they mean is mating. Mating and breeding are not the same thing. Mating is just a part of breeding. Breeding is a whole process, from vitellogenesis and mating through to ovulation, gravidity, egg laying, incubation, and hatching. Mating is just one part of that whole process. To put this into perspective, this is a 10-part video series on breeding and monitors but only this one video is about mating. In a large monitor species such as lace monitors, the entire breeding cycle may take close to a year. Of which mating makes up only a week or so. Look, I know that people commonly use the word breeding when they mean mating, and even some dictionaries may use the two interchangeably. One of my big bugbears is when someone posts in an online monitor group that their monitors bred on the weekend, because I know that can't be true. There's no way their monitors mated, laid eggs, and produced hatchlings over a two-day period. So call it mating, copulating, fornicating, coupling, locking, having sex, making love, making the beast of two backs, getting down and dirty, getting funky, whatever. Just don't call it breeding, for the sake of clarity. So now that I've finished my little rant, what are some of the things one needs to know about mating and monitors? The first thing is that it is consensual, and by this I mean that the female is a willing participant. She doesn't run away. If the male has to chase the female around, or if there's any chasing involved at all, then chances are the female is not ready. If the female is undergoing vitellogenesis and is receptive, she'll usually adopt a prone position with her head on the floor or substrate and wait for the male to approach. I call this assuming position. Often when the male starts to approach, the female will then slowly crawl away to a spot in which she'd like the mating to occur. The pair will often head twitch, and I'll talk a bit more about this later. Mentioned in the first video in this series that one of the female lace monitors under my care had an obsession with mating on the rug. And if you watch all of these videos, you'll notice her doing a sharp turn when she reaches the edge of the rug to make sure that she and the male stay on it for mating. Sometimes the female will rest with her tail base slightly raised off the floor, or will even lift her tail base as the male approaches. Usually you'll see some of the tongue flicking mentioned in the previous video. Here's a similar sequence in a pair of parentes. The male is seeking out the female. 
The female's waiting patiently for him. When she knows he's on the trail, she begins to walk away slowly towards a good spot for mating. Not only is mating always consensual, but it is often initiated by the female herself. In this series of photographs, I let the male out of the enclosure for a wander around, when the female had noticed him on the floor and wanted to be let out. I didn't get to the enclosure in time, and she had already managed to slide the glass door open, so I decided to grab my camera and see what happened next. So here she's looking down at the male, who has now noticed her and is waiting for her to come down to the floor. So she proceeds to climb out on her own. When she reaches the floor, she walks past the male and waits for him to follow her, which he does. And then she does a sharp turn to lead him onto the rug. And you know what happens next. Oh, God, no wonderful. Sometimes the male is a bit slow in the uptake and the female has to do a fair bit of flirting to get him interested. I apologize for the video quality as this is an old video, but in this sequence the male was enjoying a sunny patch on the kitchen floor when the female started flirting with him to get him to follow her. Watch how she slowly crawls under him, circles him, and then crawls over him to get him interested. Once he's interested, she then heads for the rug in the lounge room. He tries to mate with her on the floor on the way, but she's not having a bar of it. Then eventually they get to the rug, she chooses a good spot, and then it's on. Shake that thing. In this sequence, the pair are enjoying a bit of sun on the sofa when the female decides it's time to mate. She looks back at the male over her shoulder and then approaches him. She considers trying to crawl under him, but then crawls on top of him instead. Once he's interested in head twitching, she crawls off the sofa and heads for the rug. He watches her and then flings himself off the sofa and follows her. Once on the rug, she chooses the right spot. Turning at right angles when she reaches the edge of the rug to make sure they stay on it. Eventually she picks a spot and it's on. Oh God, no wonderful. I realize I'm being a bit repetitive here, but it's important to show how gentle and consensual mating is in monitors. And the reason I'm emphasizing this is because people often assume that if their monitors are going through the physical act of mounting, then they must have a pair. But as I mentioned in the first video in this series, that's not necessarily true. Males will mount other males, and females will mount other females, or even males, as a sign of aggression or dominance. In those instances, the coupling isn't as gentle or consensual, but is usually a bit rougher, and the head twitching that precedes it is usually a bit more ballistic. The differences can sometimes be subtle, but before you get too excited about your pair mating, make sure you have a pair. On a similar note, there should be no biting involved. The males of a lot of other lizard groups, like skinks and dragons, will bite the female in the nape of the neck during mating, but this is not the done thing with monitors. Given the teeth that many species of monitor have, if biting were the done thing, the wilds would be littered with the headless carcasses of female monitors. So again, if your monitors are biting each other, you either don't have a pair, or you have a pair but they aren't ready for mating. While on this topic of aggression versus mating, earlier I mentioned that mating pairs will usually head twitch when approaching each other. Unfortunately, head twitching isn't an indication of a sex pair or mating behavior either, as monitors of any sex will often head twitch when they first meet each other or as a prelude to aggression. 
Just to give you an idea of what head twitching looks like when mating is not on the menu, watch these two wild male lace monitors square off over personal space in a picnic area. The difference between head twitching out of aggression and head twitching as a prelude to mating is that aggressive head twitching is more frantic. It's a lot more agitated, whereas head twitching prior to mating is usually calmer, especially the male's head twitching. So let's look at a typical mating sequence. You can see the subtle head twitching by the male I was mentioning earlier. The female will often crawl around for a bit, belly on the ground, looking for a suitable place to mate. And the male will sometimes walk over her, like this. When she finds a suitable place to mate, she stops, and the male will move his hind foot like he's strumming a guitar. People will often say that the male is lifting the female's tail up, but that's not necessarily the case, as it's usually just a trigger for her to lift her tail up on her own. Often the male will be strumming her hind leg rather than the base of her tail. Once mating starts, it lasts for just a few minutes. You probably will not see the male's hemipenis at all for he'll avert it directly into the female's cloaca, rather than avert it before inserting. This goes back to what I was saying in the video on sexing monitors, which is that it's possible to own a male for many years and never see his hemipenes. So not sighting hemipenes is not a reliable way to sex a monitorous female. Sperm travels up a groove in the hemipenis, known as a sulcus. They'll then travel up the oviducts to the opening of the oviducts, which is where they'll remain until the next stage of the reproductive cycle, ovulation, which I'll be covering in the next video. So much for the biology lesson, now back to photographs and videos of actual monitors. After mating, the pair may stay wrapped around each other for a while. They'll typically rest for 5-10 to 10 minutes, and then mate again. At the peak of the female cycle, the pair will mate frequently, several times a day, for several days on end. It isn't unusual for the pair to have a big session early in the day, mating 10-15 to 15 times over the course of a couple of hours, and then mate now and then throughout the rest of the day. This will usually be repeated daily for around a week. If you've ever seen lions mate, it's a bit like that. The female leads the male to a good spot, they mate, they rest for a while, and then the female gets up and finds another suitable spot to mate again, with the male following her. Where lions and monitors differ, of course, is that male monitors have two penises called hemipenes, as you may recall from episode 2 in this series. And what's really interesting is that male monitors tend to alternate hemipenes during a long session of mating. It isn't a perfect left, right, left sequence, especially if the pair has a long rest between mating, but if the mating is really frequent, the male will alternate left, right, left, right, left, right. Here's a sequence of photographs with timestamps and an L or R to indicate left or right hemipenis. Because my monitors were so fixated on the rug, 
One day I decided to set my camera up on a tripod and take a time-lapse video of them mating while I was working in the next room, knowing that it was really unlikely that they'd leave the rug. This is how the footage looks at 25 frames per second. As expected, the pair did not leave the rug. When the timeline is slowed down to see the individual matings, you can see the male has alternated hemipenes perfectly over the course of the 11 matings recorded. For the next 3 to 10 days, when the pair isn't mating, they're usually doing what can only be described as cuddling. I realize I'm being a bit anthropomorphic, but it really is the best way to describe this behavior, as they act like a couple of teens in love. They're rarely apart, and are more often than not touching, usually with one animal's arm or leg over the other. One of the most comical poses I've seen with my lace monitors was when I was busy elsewhere in the house and hadn't shut the door to my room properly, so the monitors managed to get in. I was wondering why it was so quiet and then opened the door to this. This was not a setup shot. So that's pretty much it for mating and monitors. I hope you've learned something from this video, and if not, then at least you enjoyed it. In the next video, I'll be discussing ovulation, which is a really important stage in the reproductive cycle. If you want to be notified when the video is posted, please click the subscribe button below this video and make sure notifications are turned on. See you then.